Do you enjoy talking about computers and technology? Or perhaps you have a computer war story you'd like to share with others. If so, please stay tuned, because we just might have the group for you. Hello and welcome to The Better Part. My name is Charles Bedord, and today my guests are two individuals who belong to a very interesting organization with a very peculiar name. I'd like to introduce Mr. John Buck and Dr. Maury Green, members of SPOG. Can you please tell the audience a little bit of, uh, about SPOG? What does SPOG stand for and what does your group do? SPOG was founded at Stanford, and the name stands for Stanford Palo Alto User Group. Full name is Stanford Palo Alto User Group for PC. Uh, originally, it was mostly Stanford people, and they met on Stanford campus. As time went on, uh, we have started meeting in other places. I see. Where does your group meet now? We meet at the Palo Alto Elks Lodge on the third Wednesday of the month. I see. Seven o'clock at night. And where is uh, Palo Alto El Elks Lodge located? 4249 El Camino Real, Palo Alto, uh, near Charleston and El Camino. Another landmark is the uh, Cabana. Okay, that's interesting. Now, when I had an opportunity to attend SPOG, I, I attended a uh, dinner beforehand. Is that a commonplace? Do you usually have that too? We do. Yeah. We have. Uh, People are invited to the dinner beforehand. The dinner starts at 5.45, so there's plenty of time to eat before our, our meeting starts. We have conversation about lots of things. So that sounds terrific. So people can come in and have a nice hot dinner and uh, spend a good evening talking about computers and software, et cetera. Yes. <laughs> can you t tell us a little bit about the history of SPOG? Uh, how was SPOG formed and uh, how does it evolved into what it is today? Well, SPOG actually started just after the Homebrew Computer Club, which many people know about, uh, dissolved. And it's back in 1983 when it started. And it evolved over the years as the computer changed, so did the club. The interests in the club, the interests of the people in the club changed, the needs changed. In the original days, the only way people could really get information about how to use this new device was to have user groups that would meet and discuss the problems. And now there's so much information on the internet that the club has had to modify its, pr its programs and move along into other areas as well. So we've expanded actually from just the PC computer into the area of computers and technology in general. So you discuss uh, things related to Apple products and uh, a whole variety of different things then? Yes, actually beyond computers per se. We discussed the use of computers in other forms of technology. We just had, for example, a lecture on the use of computers in medical information systems. Well, that sounds very interesting. That's certainly been in the news a lot recently. Yes. Yes, especially with 3D printing. Uh, and, and that's all. another and topic that's as far up. as um manufacturing uh, organ parts or pieces of uh, equipment that can be inserted into the body. Um, can you tell us, well, why do each of you attend SPOG meetings? What do, what do you get out of SPOG meetings? I attend first, I like, the, for the socializing, uh, we get information that sometimes comes as a, as a surprise. We, we'll learn things that we hadn't expected to learn. Speakers are usually good. And because of the size of the group, we have a fairly intimate contact with the speaker. We can often ask questions during the presentation. I see. We will have anywhere from 35 to 50 people at a meeting in the lodge room. That's quite large. It's just a pretty good sized group. The membership actually runs about a little more than twice that for the entire club. And we then will have a chance at dinner and we and before the actual speaker talk, uh, we have a, a session called Random Access in which the members can ask questions related to problems they may be having with their computers and they'll get answers from other members in the room. I see. 
Do uh, all the uh, members of SPOG actively participate, uh, have different roles and so on? They do in the discussions, I see. if they have something to contribute. I see. Now, uh, why you mentioned uh, online access and so on, can you give an idea, why would you attend a meeting of SPOG rather than just having your questions answered in online forums? What are the advantages of, uh, of going to a live, a live meeting like this? Again, for one, the socializing. Right. Two, uh, people know things that are just, it's easier to find information when somebody's already been there and, and can serve as a guide rather than having to dig deeply uh, as in, through an internet search. Mm -hmm. I think I could amplify that a little bit further, and that is sometimes when a member will ask a question, that's really not the question or it's not really the right perspective on the question to get the answer that he needs and it's only through that live discussion that you're able to tease out what the real underlying problem is and then answer the question for them so it's it's the interchange it's the back and forth that's important which is more difficult in an online forum could you perhaps give us an example of where where that might be true um very often you'll hear somebody complain that his computer is failing to start or his computer is going to blue screen or he's having other technical problems with the operation of the computer but he hasn't really given you all the symptoms just like a medical examination right. uh, he hasn't given you all the symptoms and you have to do a little more introspective questioning to get at what the real problem is and ask whether he's tried certain remedies that have worked or not worked and then you can finally find a way to the answer that you're looking for. And this is certainly uh, something that you can only get out of personal one-on-one -on -one contact. Or even multiple on one, which is what the meeting basically is <laughs> because you've got 50 people sitting there all listening to the question and many of them are going to have different viewpoints and different answers. That's interesting. So you can, can have, a, you have an opportunity for some debate back and forth yes. then, perhaps. Yes. I think you intimated a moment ago that uh, you talk about topics other than computers at SPOG. Uh, can you give some examples of various other types of topics you've talked to, you've talked about? Oh, yes. In uh, one of our recent meetings, we had a fellow flying a drone. Oh, really? In the, in the room, yes. In and, the room? In the room. In the meeting room. Not a you know not a great big drone, but <laughs> it's a drone not. that he uses in real estate for uh, taking pictures of various places. And we had another uh, time when we uh, worked we worked online from our room to the company that makes Beam across town over at San Antonio and Charleston. And one of our members remotely controlled what's called a a remote presence device which is a, a, a robot type thing that rolls around on the floor and it's got a TV screen up there and a camera. So, and there's a camera on you if you uh, are fully set up and so you can roam around and become part of a meeting, walk down corridors, etc. Really interesting technology. So uh, this is the stuff that you hear about on news broadcasts and so on, uh, but you can actually become part of it there. Is this very common? Does this occur every so often? Every so often, yes. Not, not every meeting, but every so often. I see. So you have some pretty inventive people uh, in, in your organization then. We have a pretty good variety, a good mix of people with a lot of interesting backgrounds. We have people who are pioneers in the computer industry that have been working in it for 20, 30 years. We have people who are novices. We have people who have very little computer in, uh, experience per se, but they have other experience in fields that, that work into that, and it all comes together in an interesting discussion. A recent past president uh, figures that about 20% of the members have doctorate degrees of some sort. Yeah, I see, I see. So uh, I take it you all watch the Big Bang Theory occasionally? Or? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, I'm blessed by not having television. Oh, you are? <laughs> okay, okay. Um, aside from uh, computers and your meetings, does SPOG reach out into the community and uh, get involved in community affairs? Yes, we do. Uh, well, for SPOG is actually a nonprofit educational organization. 
Amazing. And so we will use some of the funds that we're able to generate to help other organizations. I know that we've made donations to the Veterans Hospital to help some of the veterans there. Uh, we have offered in, in many cases to go into senior living facilities or other places to help teach seniors how to use the new technology, how to keep up with their grandchildren, as it were. Well, that's very important uh, because certainly with the uh, innovation, I think, of mobile computing systems, such as just your basic uh, uh, phone or your iPad or uh, whatever, certainly now people, uh, let's say in assisted living, can send email messages back and forth. They can certainly send texts, uh, they can send pictures uh, back and forth and so right. on. Do you actually go into facilities then and help people with this? We haven't recently been doing any of that. We've made offers to go down to some of the facilities if they want us to come in and help teach. And in addition to just the computers themselves, we also uh, have programs which uh, explore areas that are adjacent to that. For example, I do a fair amount of video editing, and oh, I've made do. presentations on how to edit and produce a video. Uh, we have other members who might come in and talk about digital photography. And we talk about uh, topics that use computers are just as valid as the computers themselves. Well, that sounds We're really... into the Internet of Things. I see. Okay. So you talk about a wide variety of topics. You can have drones flying overhead and robots running yes. around in the room with you. <laughs> so it sounds like quite a meeting. Somebody suggest an item, let's say, one of the members suggests an item for a SPOG meeting, and how would they go about doing that? Uh, anybody can suggest an item, even uh, somebody out in the public who would like to make a presentation is invited. Our program chairman contacts are listed on our website, or you can contact our president, mm -hmm. come to a meeting. We're, we're happy to uh, entertain suggestions. You know, one of the topics that people hear a lot about today in computing is a cloud. And many people think of clouds as uh, some condensed moisture that's floating up, of, up in the sky. Um, can you tell me what is a cloud and how does a cloud relate to computing? What, what is this all about? The cloud actually is right here on Earth. It's not up in the air. And basically what it is is a large number of computers that are linked together on the Internet and serve as a place for storage and availability of software programs, applications, and places to keep data. Now, what are the so, advantages of working in the cloud? For instance, people talk about, well, we're putting all of our data into a cloud or going to cloud computing. What does that look like? And what, what, what are the advantages of the cloud versus the way things used to be done pre-cloud? <laughs> Well, one of the things, of course, is that when it's up in the cloud, it's accessible to you or anybody else anywhere. You're not limited by contact, by having it on one machine in one fixed location that you can, that, that may be difficult to get to. I see. But that also, of course, implies certain security considerations. You don't want to have stuff in the cloud that you don't want the public to know about. I see. Now, uh, so how do you avoid that? How do you go about not putting things in the cloud that you want? you don't want people to know about. You just think smart. <laughs> so it's, it's a matter of choice. In fact, if we talk later about security, uh, the worst security problem is social engineering. And the, in other words, convincing the user to do something they didn't realize that they were doing, which gives you an advantage. And the same thing is true on cloud use and cloud storage. You just have to be judicious about what you put up there in remote storage and how you access it. So for instance, uh, people talk about putting posts that they, on Facebook that they wish they wouldn't have put on Facebook. Correct. For instance, is Facebook an example of cloud computing? It's uh, definitely an example of cloud computing. Okay. Um, so when did the cloud come about? What does this, how long does this date back? I would estimate about 10 years as it's been growing and becoming common usage. And I think you can look back, some of the early examples of it would be for, uh, let's say, Amazon. 
And I when see. it started to put a lot of things, there, there is an Amazon cloud service now. There are now places where if you want to transfer large files that can't be transferred by email, you put them up on storage in the cloud and you give somebody else access to them and they can download them from there. So, for instance, if I go on Amazon now and buy something, does everybody have access to what I bought? No, but for example, Kindle is a very good example of how Amazon uses the cloud. Your books are up on, on the cloud storage in Amazon and you can access it from your Kindle reader, from your cell phone, from your computer at home, wherever you are. And okay. that's the major advantage of it, is the ready availability. Well, I think I understand that a lot better now. Thank you very much for that explanation. One other uh, thing that we've re been reading about recently is the area of cyber warfare and cyber security and uh, assaults on your cyber security systems. Have you discussed this in your group? Yes, we have. In fact, I invited uh, an FBI agent from their cyber crimes division to come down and give a talk, which we had, I believe, about a year and a half ago at the SPOG meeting. Very interesting topic on what they do to try to counter the problems, both for international cybersecurity and also cyber crimes within the country. I see. Can you tell us, a, what did he say, for instance? So what, what do they do, really? Well, <laughs> uh, the exact techniques, of course, he wouldn't divulge right. to us. But the whole idea is to try to monitor the chatter on the channels, much in the way that the government is monitoring us now uh, or at least monitoring the traffic to see if they pick up any unusual uh, conversations or unusual communications that are suspicious to them. I see. Do they monitor things such as text messages, too? Or? I'm not aware that they do. Okay. But okay. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, one, one term that we hear a lot about today is social networks. Can you tell us what is a social network? How does it operate? And does your, does your group address social networks? Again, not yet. Some of us are, are Facebook users. Some of us are LinkedIn users. Uh, and the social network, as I understand it, is an easy way for people to have person-to-person -person communication fairly quickly, fairly instantly. Uh, they can post stuff up there. My, my church has a Facebook page that is very exciting to look at. Um, we're in an area that is rich in resources. Uh, Facebook headquarters are here, LinkedIn headquarters are here, etc. Stuff's going on all around us that we need to be able to explain to our members and potential members what, what's happening and how they can either take part in it or at least have, a, have some understanding of it. I see. Okay. Yeah. Yes. There's another aspect to that as well, and that is the fact that these technologies are interactive with each other. I do a fair amount of web design, and aside from a standard website, we also push po topics from the website out to Facebook, out to Twitter, out to LinkedIn, so they get posted there. The idea is that people who see them there will then come back into the website and continue to learn more about what the organization is doing. So in the development that we're doing now on a new website for SPOG, we will be using Facebook in order to promote some of the activities of the organization, of the club, and then bring people back to the website to learn more about us and read the history and read the topics. Now, you, there, you touched on something I think would be very interesting to people, which is design your own website. Yes. Uh, this is becoming more and more common, but I think many people will they'll say, my gosh, how do I go about doing that? What do I put on it? I don't know the first thing to do about that. Do you address these types of things? Uh, in the past, uh, Maury has been associated with special interest groups where members who have had that interest can gather together and talk about it in detail. For, for SPOG, we don't do it as a general meeting topic. We'll talk about the availability of it and give people some clues as to what they might do, but 
to get down into the nuts and bolts level, that takes more than the general meeting can handle. Well, let me just, uh, be, uh, well, we have some time. Let me just touch on two other uh, ideas that have come up. And this is, one is password security, and number two, backing up data. I myself, for instance, am very guilty of poor password security because I have passwords. Well, I tend to use the same password for each uh, uh, portal that I, that, that I enter because I don't want to try to memorize different ones. I also don't try to overcomplicate my passwords, so I have to look it up every single time I use it. How important is it really to have individual passwords for every uh, area that you enter on a computer, or can you get by with something less sophisticated? There's discussion about that, of course, all the way from passwords are obsolete to you need really long, difficult passwords mm -hmm. to a two-part identification where you have a password and some other piece of information that gets communicated between you and the source. Uh, there, one of the things I've read recently is that you should use, have a have a common password, basically a cheap password for sites that just want a password but aren't critical to your right. life. You want to do something better for your bank account, et cetera. You want to make that one really hard to get into. Mm -hmm. but, but to subscribe to some newspaper or something doesn't have to be quite that strong. The second topic we hear quite mm -hmm. a bit about is data backup. You hear uh, radio advertisements for various types of systems that are supposed to back up your data. Tell us, what is backup and why is this important? And does everybody need to back up everything? We know so much better than we do. Few people back up as consistently as they should. I know that I don't. And there are several ways of backup. There are programs that will automatically run and, and do backups. Uh, there are programs, uh, sometimes, you know, I do, I do it manually, I have to confess. Uh, and of course, part of backup is the security. Back it up to a device that you can take off-site so that in case your house falls down or burns <laughs> up or somebody breaks in and steals your stuff, you can recreate your data from a backup that a friend has or that's in your bank safety deposit box. Mm -hmm. I see. Interesting. This takes us back into your question about the cloud because there are actually commercial services available now that will let you do your backup to the cloud okay. and then okay. it's certainly off-site and protected from anything that might happen physically. Okay. One of the things I noticed you brought here is a uh, newsletter. And could you tell us a little bit about the newsletter? I can because I edit the newsletter. Okay. <laughs> and the newsletter has changed a bit over the years, and I've tried to make it attractive, informative, and, uh, int well, interesting. And uh, I, we have you know, a message from our president, we have something about club activities, and also a fair amount of filler these days that gets people, that sh more than what we can cl carry in the meeting, that gets people talking about other things. How can learn, someone learn more about uh, the Stanford Palo Alto Users Group, or SPOG? Well, go to our website first of all, look at the topics that are coming up, and then come to a meeting as a guest. We're happy to have people come in, attend a meeting or two, and then if they like what they see and they want to continue participating, join the club and become a member. Is there a fee for membership? Yes. And approximately what is that fee? Thirty dollars a year. Okay, well that's, that's certainly very reasonable. As far as uh, the best way to become involved then is to more or less just show up at a meeting or I suppose they could, people could contact uh, either of you or any other members in the club. Um, yes. are, there, are there any closing comments you'd like to make about SPOG? It's a good organization for people who want to learn more about computers. Computers have changed from being fancy state-of-the-art items to basically their, their appliances now, and we're learning how to use these computers to do other things. We don't build them anymore. We keep them running and we, we use them. Let's see. I, I think we focused a bit, or at least I did in some of the comments I made, about the older age segment of our membership and population. Right. But we very much would like to also invite a lot of the younger generation to come and join us and teach us about some of the new mobile technologies, about some of the new uh, uses of computers that are unfamiliar to some of the older people because they haven't been using them or haven't caught up with them. That's another way we'd like to expand the club. And as I mentioned, 
we have expanded from just simply computers into technologies that employ computers and use computers. So it's really computers and technology that is the basis of the club. Okay, well, that's, that's very interesting. I'd like to thank our guests today for a very interesting discussion of SPOG, the Stanford Palo Alto User Group for PCs. Again, if you'd like to get involved, please visit their website or attend a meeting. They'd be glad to assist you. I'd also like to thank our audience for joining us on The Better Part, and I hope you found the show to be informative. Be sure to view this and other Better Part shows on YouTube. See you next week. Thank you.